Welcome to speedy walkthroughs where we show just the important stuff to beating the game. For first time viewers this will look different to a normal walkthrough. It will show just the essentials so that you don't need to spend a long time watching this video. I won't talk about finding specific enemies unless they're very difficult but I will show you where to go and what to do. Today we're playing Pokemon Fire Red which is a remake of the Kanto games for the Game Boy Advance. This is very similar to Pokemon Leaf Green so this walkthrough should work for you regardless of which version you're playing. I'm also going to be showing everything in the game and that's all the way up to the post game ending which is Elite Four Round 2. So you will get the credits if you beat the Elite Four for the first time but then there's a bunch of extra stuff you have to do in the game and there's this whole Sevi Islands adventure and then you catch Mewtwo and then you beat the Elite Four again. So I'll be playing up to that which is basically all the content in the game including the post game. Alright, so as you start off here, you're going to be going through this section uh, with Professor Oak and he's going to be explaining to you all about the wonderful world of Pokemon. So pretty much all you have to do here is enter your name and then go through the text boxes. Alright, once you've done that, you're going to be coming out into the main area of the game. I like those settings, uh, so you can feel free to choose those if you want. It just makes the whole game go a little bit faster. Uh, what you want to do is leave Pallet Town and then head out up onto this tall grass here. Um, then Professor Oak will grab you back from that tall grass telling you you can't go out there yet and you'll get to choose the starter Pokemon. Uh, so you can choose between fire, water and grass and the game works sort of like rock, paper, scissors. I'm going to choose the water starter. Um, that's generally the easiest and best one for playing through the game because um, water is pretty good against the first gym but then it's strong throughout the whole game. So I would suggest Squirtle but you can pick whichever one you want to really. Now, as part of Elite Four Round 2, what we're going to be doing is getting the National Pokedex. Uh, that's kind of required to get through some of the post-game areas because it doesn't unlock until you've got the National Pokedex. And what that means is we're going to have to catch 60 Pokemon, um, which is quite a lot. There's about 110 or 120 that you can get without trading all up. So we're going to be catching about half of those. So I don't have the ability to catch Pokemon yet. Um, but pretty soon I'm going to get Pokeballs from Professor Oak and we're going to basically be catching every Pokemon we see. So that's what I recommend that you do when you're playing through this game is that you're just catching, catching, catching because um, they're going to be very useful. Alright, so we're going to head up through here and we're making our way up to um, the first town and we're going to get Oak's parcel there. Alright, so up through this tall grass, we're going to keep going. Uh, we're going to go to the Poker Martin here, and then he'll give us Oak's Parcel. So now that we got Oak's Parcel, we're going to head back uh, to the Poker Center and just heal up, and then we're going to head back down to Pallet Town. All right, now we go back in and talk to Professor Oak. He's going to give us a big long talk about how he's basically going to be giving us the Pokedex. So he'll also give us five Pokeballs, but we're going to go and buy some more Pokeballs soon because we're going to need a lot of them to catch all the Pokemon and get the National Dex. Now generally you'll uh, weaken a Pokemon before you try and catch it. Uh, if you get lucky enough, you can just throw a ball and catch it like that. Um, it's up to you. If you know the move's uh, not going to kill it, then I would use the move and weaken it first. So he just caught a Rattata and a Pidgey, so we've already got three Pokemon on our way to filling out 60 in the Pokedex all up. Back up here and we're going to stock up on Pokeballs because we'll need to catch so many Pokemon it makes sense to have these in stock. And this dude's going to give us a little catching tutorial. Alright, moving up, we're going into Viridian Forest here. Uh, we'll be catching a Caterpie on the way in. Now, the bug Pokemon are actually pretty good for filling out your Pokedex, because if we were to level up this Caterpie um, and level it up all the way to level 10, it will have evolved twice by then. So once into Metapod and then into Butterfree. Let's get a Weedle here, I'm going to catch that as well. Again, Weedle's pretty similar, um, it'll, it'll evolve twice by the time you hit to level 10, so you could evolve those and get your Pokedex pretty much filled out. 
I'm actually going to catch a Metapod here at a slightly higher level. So you could have evolved the Caterpie into a Metapod, or you could just uh, have the Metapod. We got a compulsory trainer here, so we're gonna fight them. Uh, you might have noticed, but I picked up an invisible potion uh, just in front of the trainer there, so that's always good to grab that one. All right, moving on out, we're done with Viridian Forest. Uh, so we're gonna catch Kakuna on the way out here. Again, that'll just add to our Pokedex a little bit. So I'm not gonna go super out of my way to catch extra stuff, but I'm gonna catch everything that I see, and then hopefully we can hit kind of near 60 and grab a Pikachu on the way out here. Pikachu has a pretty low chance of spawning in the forest, but you definitely can get one. Um, so that's adding to our Pokedex a little bit more. If you're playing Pokemon Leaf Green instead, you may end up getting slightly different Pokemon in some areas of the game, um, but you'll be able to catch Pokemon nonetheless and make your total up to 60. Uh, we're in our first gym, which is Brock, and uh, this gym's pretty easy if you pick Squirtle because you just use the water attacks on all of his rock and ground type Pokemon. Uh, they're usually super effective, which is really good. And there we go, that's Brock defeated. Um, so the way this game works is that there will be eight gyms. That was the first gym out of those. Uh, so once we get all eight gym badges, we'll go to the Elite Four and beat round one of that. And then as I said before, we're going to do round two, which is the post game and everything like that. Go on to the Pokemon here and just stock up on a few different things. We've got lots of Pokeballs. Now this scientist is going to give us a running shoes, which are a brilliant item. Uh, all you need to do is hold B and you'll run a lot faster than your normal walking speed. Alright, since we fought a few trainers there, Squirtle is going to evolve into War Turtle. And it'll evolve once again, uh, once it gets into the 30s. Let me catch some more Pokemon here, so we got a Nidoran male there. Uh, Nidoran male is another very good catch. Uh, you can evolve it into Nidorino and then you can evolve it again into Nido King with a Moonstone. So when it says catch 60 Pokemon to get the national decks, uh, quite often what you'll do is you'll catch maybe 30 or 40 and then do a bunch of Pokemon evolutions to get the rest. One of the Pokemon you can get in this area, which is kind of easy to miss, is a Magikarp. Um, the old dude on the left there will sell you one. Uh, I'm not going to get it in this playthrough because you can get a Magikarp with the old rod pretty easily. Um, but if you want to bump up your Pokemon count, that's another way you can definitely do it. We got your Geodude in here because we don't have one of those yet. I just dip down there to grab a rare candy. It's a good strategy to get a bunch of rare candies in this game. What rare candies will do is they'll up your Pokemon by one level. Um, so rather than spending a bunch of time grinding, you can just go and grab rare candies instead. Uh, it's pretty effective for getting through the game quickly. We'll pick up a Moonstone there. That's used to get lots of evolutions, for example. For example, Jigglypuff, uh, which we caught before, we can just use a Moonstone on that and evolve it, so that would be very useful.
Alright, coming up to sort of the main point of Mount Moon, uh, there's this scientist who's going to be very protective of these fossils, and we get to pick up one of the two fossils when we beat him. Um, those fossils can be used to sort of get another Pokemon. You go to the Cinnabar Island lab and you can reincarnate one of them into actually being alive, um, so that's really cool. It doesn't really matter what fossil you grab, they're both pretty similar. So we go, I'm just going to grab the Helix Fossil. And Paris is a really good one to catch if you can in Mount Moon. Uh, not only because it ups your Pokedex, but also because um, it's really good for HMs. I'm going to teach Mega Punch to War Turtle there just because that's a really strong physical attack. And we're also going to teach Mega Kick. Mega Kick is stronger than Mega Punch, but uh, you've got less PP, so that means less times you can use it. And also it's less accuracy. So Mega Kick's only for those really tough to beat Pokemon. Um, but anyway, what I was saying about Paris is it's good for t uh, HMs. HMs are moves like Card or Strength or Surf. Um, and they're used to get through various roadblocks in the game. So if there's a tree blocking your way down in the game, you can cut it as long as it's the right kind of tree that you can normally cut. And Paris is really good for that. I'm just going to go and catch a couple more Pokemon in this region. Um, this area is where Fire Red and Leaf Green will differ quite a lot in their wild Pokemon. But regardless, you should be able to find some new ones there. Alright, I'm just going to dip up into this garden to grab a rare candy from right there. Um, again, that's just going to help us level up Squirt a little bit more. And we got a rival fight here. So this rival fight can actually be pretty tricky, but with Mega Kick it should be uh, fairly straightforward. Mega Kick is a much stronger move than you would normally have in a game at this point. And it's actually not in the originals there. We learned the move Bite as well, that's something else that's different compared to the original Kanto games. Uh, the original ones didn't have the Dark type Pokemon, that wasn't invented till Gen 2. Um, so Bite is a new move, well they had the move Bite but it was a normal type move back then so the Dark typing really helps. And it's super effective for example against Abra in that fight we just did. So coming up with Snugget Bridge you just gotta beat these five trainers. Now this dude will give you a nugget and then he'll fight you. There's actually kind of a cool strategy you can do here. So he gives you the nugget before you fight him. So if you do die to this battle, you'll go back to Cerulean City Pokemon Center and then you can come up and fight him again. But then he gives you another nugget. So if you want a way to make money pretty quickly, what you can do is keep dying to this battle and you'll get nuggets over and over again. Each nugget you can sell for 5,000 Poke Dollars. So it's a pretty good strategy for money. We're just going to keep making our way to the right here, grabbing any Pokemon along the way. I'm going to grab an Abra here. Abra is an amazing Pokemon because it has the move Teleport. Uh, it's not really good in battle, but what you can do with the move Teleport is teleport back to the last town that you're in. Um, so Abra is really good for getting around the game quickly before you end up learning how to fly later on. We'll catch an Oddish here as well. Just keeping in mind we do have that target of 60 Pokemon that we need to hit by the end of the game. Alright, so we're going to head in here and this is Bill's house. You have to de-transform Bill from being a Pokemon. Bill will be very grateful for this and give us a ticket to get onto the SSN. So getting onto the SSN is pretty much compulsory for beating the game because uh, we're going to get the move cut from there and that's used to cut down various trees. So that's one thing we have to do in Cerulean City. The other thing we have to do is the Cerulean Gym, uh, which is the water type gym. That's a little bit stronger than Nugget Bridge, which is why I've left it until now to do it, because that way we're a higher level for this gym. So we'll go and talk to Misty straight up, and then we'll fight her Pokemon. Uh, Mega Punch and Mega Kick are going to be pretty good for this, as well as the move Bite. Um, Bite is good against these Pokemon because they're Psychic type, so Bite is super effective being a Dark type move. Alright, and that's Misty defeated, uh, so that's two out of eight gym badges that we got so far. 
You can actually leave Misty's gym until after you've done the town below, because you will come back through Cerulean City eventually. So if you're having trouble with it, leave it and come back to it later. Alright, we go through this uh, robbed house, and there's a Team Rocket Grunt out the back who um, claims to not have done ever anything, um, but he has actually stolen the TM for Dig, so we're going to grab that from him. Um, Dig is actually quite a good move. Um, it was really good in the originals th of this game, and in this remake they've sort of made it less powerful than it used to be, um, but at any rate it's pretty good, and you could teach it to War Turtle. Um, the good thing about having War Turtle no Dig is because Dig is super effective against electric type moves, which are the next gym's moves. Um, having War Turtle no Dig would be really good because then you can have something that's super effective against electric, and electric is super effective against you, so you want to kill them quickly. Um, but the other strategy you can use is you can just capture like a Doug Trio uh, in Diglett Cave and use that against the gym. Right into the city here and we're going to stock up on more Pokeballs because we're catching a whole bunch of Pokemon. Uh, we're going to go to the SSN now. So we're going to head straight here and uh, we're going to actually teach War Turtle Dig. As I was saying before, it's a really good move, so that's why I'll be teaching it. And this should help us in the rival fight that's coming up here. We're also teaching him Water Pulse. Um, Water Pulse is a move that we got from beating Misty in Cerulean Gym. Water Pulse is just a bit of a stronger water move. It can also confuse the opponent, so um, that's really good to have. And that's the rival beaten. Now all we need to do is go up to the captain and give him a back rub, and then that should give us the cut HM. So cut's essential for getting into the gym in this town, so we sort of had to do the SSN first. So I'll go back up through here. Now you will need a Pokemon that can learn cut, um, so just be sure. If you've been catching all the Pokemon you can up to now, you'll be guaranteed to have one that should be able to learn cut, hopefully. We're going to go into this building here and talk to this dude about his Rapidash. Um, the whole point of listening through this is that he'll give us a bike voucher. Now that's used to get the bike in Cerulean City and the bike, it's not mandatory for beating the game, but you really do want to get it because it opens up a shortcut to get uh, further down the map um, and the way without the bike is really long. Also, it's a faster way to move. Now with that lock puzzle that I just went through, I got very lucky there getting the correct trash cans. What you want to do is just search all the trash cans until you find one that says the first electric lock is opened. And then the correct trash can for the second one will be either up, down, left or right from the original trash can. Um, so that's sort of how the puzzle works. Now if you get it wrong after that, then um, you'll have to try again finding the first one. So every time you find a first one, you get like a 1 in 4 chance of finishing the puzzle. Um, also, I'm pretty sure this works, but I'm pretty sure you could save after you get the first one before you check the second one, and then make sure you get the right one based on that. So, uh, we're going to be using Dig on this gym quite a lot there, and that's how we've gotten through the electric gym. Uh, normally, we'd be uh, have a really difficult time with the electric gym because we're a water type, but Dig really helps out. All right, speaking of Dig, we're going into Diglett Cave. Uh, we don't really need to do a whole lot in here apart from catch a Diglett and hopefully a Dugtrio as well. So we'll do that. So if you're having trouble with Surge's gym, pretty much what you can do is you can catch a Diglett or a Dugtrio. Preferably a Dugtrio if you can. And um, that'll be a pretty high level. I think they come around level 30. And you can pretty much guarantee you'll beat Surge's gym by using a Dugtrio. I'm actually going to go uh, down into this building here and get the HM for Flash. What Flash does is it lights up dark caves. So we'll teach it to a Pokemon um, and then we're going to use that whenever we get into like Rock Tunnel for example, it's too dark to see. Um, Flash is not technically necessary for beating the game, although you're going to have a hard time if you don't have it because you have to figure out how to get through the caves without seeing where you're going.
All right, we dig the cave down. We're gonna head back out. We can heal up in this uh, Poke Center here. And we grab the Verse Seeker from her. We're going to swap out a couple different Pokemon here. Um, Abra will pull into our party. We've got Geodude there. And there's various reasons we might want that. For example, Abra can learn Flash, which is going to be very helpful. And I think Geodude will learn some HMs for us later. So we're also going to go to this place and get the Old Rod. This is what I was talking about before with the Magikarp. You can buy a Magikarp for $500 or you can fish for it with the Old Rod anywhere. Um, so pretty much no matter where you're fishing, the old rod will always find Magikarp and pretty much only Magikarp. So, uh, yeah, we'll get a better fishing rod later on, which can catch more interesting fish. All right, heading back up, we're going to go back to Cerulean City. Now, there's not much to do in Cerulean apart from grabbing the bike, but we need to head through Cerulean City to get to the next area of the game. So there's our bike. What we're going to do is we're going to um, put it on the select button, so that'll make it really easy to use it regularly. Alright, well we're coming through here, we'll catch more Pokemon. Um, each different route has different Pokemon in the grass, so it's good to check the grass whenever you get to a new area just to see what Pokemon you can find. Little hidden super potion there, which is always nice. And as I said before, we're going to put the bike on select and use that. So we use flash and rock tunnel here. That helps light it up too. Right, and with that, we're pretty much done with Rock Tunnel. So that was probably one of the longest gauntlets of the game so far, and it's pretty hard not to die through it. Um, but if you die, it's generally easy to get through the second time because all the trainers are defeated. And we're going to head left. Uh, we're basically going to head to Cerulean City. Uh, sorry, Celadon City. Uh, but we'll catch some Pokemon along the way, but Growler, for example. Cool thing about Growlithe is you can evolve it with a Firestone, so when you catch the one Growlithe, that's almost like catching two Pokemon rather than one. Just helps add to the totals. So go through this underground path and we end up in Celadon City. There's a couple things we can do here. First thing we're going to do is actually uh, raid the Team Rocket hideout. So we'll talk to this dude here who's standing in front of the poster, and when we beat him, uh, he'll reveal there's a secret switch behind the poster. We can use that switch to get into the hideout properly. There we go. So this can be a bit confusing the first time you play it, but you want to go down to B3F and take these warps. And then you go and get the lift key from finding this rocket here. Now we got the lift key, we can go back up to the second floor and then we can take the lift from there. So there's a red candy there, be sure to grab that. We'll go back up to the second floor and take these warps through. And then we can actually get into the lift. Uh, so we'll be down on B4F now, and then we'll go through these doors. Alright, with the two Team Rocket Grunts beaten, we're going to go through to Giovanni. And we just have to have a normal fight against him. If you picked War Turtle as your starter, you're going to have a pretty easy fight, because he's got mostly ground-type Pokemon. And there we go. 
So we got the Sylph Scope. Now what the Sylph Scope does is it lets us um, see ghost Pokemon, so that's really good. I got out of there so quickly by digging with War Turtle, and then we're going to um, get the tea from this building. Now that's something different compared to the originals of this game. In the originals you got uh, like soda and gave it to the guard, but in this one you got tea. We're going to get Eevee from the top of this building because that's just another one to add to our Pokedex. Then we're going to head out. I think the reason they changed it from soda to tea is you used to have to buy the soda. And if you managed to get into a situation where you'd spent all of your money and you couldn't get any more, then you couldn't actually buy the soda and continue the game. So there, she gave us Fly, and we're going to teach Fly uh, to our Pidgey that we caught before. Our Pidgey can fly us around to any town that we've already been to. So we're going to head back to Lavender Town here and go into the Pokemon Tower. Uh, and that Sylph Scope is going to come in handy to help us see all the ghosts. we just got to fight our rival first. Now we've beaten our rival. Um, War Turtle's evolving into Blastoise, so that's always good, because um, we hit the right level for that to happen. So we've beaten our rival and we're going to head back up into the tower. Uh, if you start uh, getting low on health, don't worry too much, because pretty soon we're going to have an opportunity to heal up in this tower. Take the opportunity now to catch um, a couple of ghost Pokemon, like Ghastly for example. This is also a really good place to do um, something called EV grinding. It's probably a bit advanced if you're just trying to play the game from start to finish, but depending on what type of Pokemon you fight, you can get different EVs and basically like if we fight a bunch of Gastlys, our special attack is going to increase and with something like Blastoise that's a pretty good stat to increase. So if you want you can stick around and fight maybe like 20-30 Gastlys and that'll just give you a little bit of a boost on special attack. Each Pokemon will give you different EVs. Alright, so we got a rare candy there, and then pretty soon we're going to come across the actual ghost of Pokemon Tower. If you didn't have the Sylph Scope, you could get this far, but then you couldn't do anything with the ghost. Um, so you have to have the Sylph Scope to sort of unmask the ghost, and then you have to kill that Marowak. I'm pretty sure you can't catch it, unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to stick around and catch a Cubone while we're here. And we'll also catch a Haunter while we're here. So that's pretty much all you can catch. Um, Ghastly, Haunter, and Cubone up here. But they're all good to have. Alright, heading up. I'm going to deal with these guys. Alright, with all those Team Rocket people beaten, we're going to see Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji is going to be really happy and give us a Poker Flute. What the Poker Flute does is it wakes up the sleeping Pokemon Snorlax. Uh, so at this point, you can pretty much head south on the map. Um, so you can either go left like I'm doing and head south that way, or you can go to the right under Lavender Town and head south. The way I'm doing is quicker, but you do need the bike to make this work. Because um, we're about to go on Bicycle Road, and you can only get onto Bicycle Road uh, if you have a bicycle. So I'm just going to weaken Snorlax a little bit before trying to catch it. Um, but it is worth catching Snorlax. Um, it's a pretty strong Pokemon to have in your party. So even if you want to just keep it in there, and then let's suppose your Blastoise or whatever dies, then um, Snorlax can be sort of used to use items like revives and potions and stuff on your Blastoise. Because um, it'll take quite a few hits to kill Snorlax. I'm just slowing down to grab a couple Pokemon on Cycling Road here. And we're going to be heading down into Fuchsia City. Grab a Firo while we're here. Now Fuchsia City Gym is Poison type, uh, so Dig is going to be quite a good move for us to use here. Um, unless of course those Pokemon uh, are in the air. And something I added new with this game is abilities. Um, for example, Levitate. Some Pokemon have that, and it stops uh, ground moves from being able to hit them. It's pretty annoying. You can usually tell if a Pokemon has Levitate, though, because they're airborne. <coughs> I 
Alright, I'm going to go through to the gym leader here. Gym leader has a whole bunch of poison type Pokemon. Alright, so we're going to head out of this gym, and um, the other thing to do in this town is the Safari Zone, so we'll just heal up here quickly and then we'll go through to the Safari Zone. Um, if you're trying to get that uh, magic number 60 to get your national deck, Safari Zone is a brilliant place to do it. So we get 30 Safari Bulls, and these fights aren't like normal fights, they're like Safari Zone fights. Um, so you don't have your normal menu where you send a Pokemon out, you can either throw a ball, rock, bait, or run. Um, best strategy for catching them is literally just throw balls and hope for the best. So I'm also going to use a good rod here to get some more Pokemon from the lake. Uh, we got a Goldeen. And with the lake Pokemon, um, the good rod will give you different Pokemon to the old rod and to the super rod. So it's worth um, checking all the rods and seeing which Pokemon you can get. Um, where I actually got the good rod from, I got it just um, underneath in Fuchsia. So you can see we're pretty quickly racking up a lot of Pokemon for our Pokedex, which is really good. One thing I probably should have mentioned before, um, you can tell whether or not you've caught a Pokemon yet by uh, there's like a little Pokeball sign next to its health bar. Um, so for example, Kangaskhan we haven't caught, that's why it doesn't have a Pokeball there. But next time we see a Kangaskhan it will have a Pokeball there. It's a pretty handy way to just know where you're up to. So though we're catching a bunch of Pokemon, the actual point of Safari Zone is we're going to go and get the HM for Surf. Um, so we're sort of on our way to that, even though we're slowing down a lot to get lots of extra Pokemon. And each different area in Safari Zone is going to have different Pokemon in it. Um, so for example, Venomoth here, that's why we haven't found a Venomoth until now. Alright, so we got ourselves a Chansey from this area as well. One good thing um, to do if you ever catch a Chansey in a Pokemon game like this is to check if it's holding an item called a Lucky Egg. It's incredibly rare, like it's only a 5% chance, but if it is, what you could do is attach that to your main Pokemon and the Lucky Egg gives you a lot more experience points from battling. So um, it's a really good way to sort of speed up the game a lot and speed up leveling up your Pokemon because you're getting 50% more experience points. Um, but it's extremely rare to get a Lucky Egg. Not only is Chansey really difficult to catch, but it's only got the 5% chance of holding a Lucky Egg once you catch it. Alright, flying back to Celadon City here, and then we're going to go to the right and use our tea. So if you couldn't get through this gate here, you want to go into the building with the lady with the tea. It's in Celadon City, um, pretty close to the Pokemon Center. We're going to head up into Silphco here, uh, we'll go up to this floor here, floor 5, and then we're going to head down. So that's the card key, the card key is used to open those sort of 
these kind of doors. We're just going to head out of these two doors here and then we'll head across. There's a couple beds here that you can sleep in if you want to, so you just talk to the lady to do that and that heals you up just like a Pokemon Center would. So that's really good for this part of Silphco, especially since we're going to have a difficult fight coming up. Alright, here's uh, Gary again. We're going to have another rival fight with him. Uh, this one's pretty tricky because he's all leveled up, so just try and do the best that you can here. Alright, and you'll eventually beat Gary there. Um, so there's a dude here who will give you a Lapras as well. You want to talk to him and grab that because that's yet another Pokemon. A Lapras is also really good for learning Surf if you don't have a Water-type Pokemon. Alright, now that we've beaten this Team Rocket Grunt as well, we can head through to Giovanni. One thing that I'll mention is that now that we've got the Poke Flute, if your Pokemon does get put to sleep, you can wake it up using the Poke Flute. Um, that's something not a lot of people know about that item. Alright, with Giovanni defeated, you'll talk to this dude and he'll give you the Master Ball. Um, so in pretty much every Pokemon game, you get the Master Ball and there's only one of them in the entire game. Um, except some games which have a lottery which you can win the Master Ball if you win that. Um, the Master Ball is a brilliant item. It catches any Pokemon without missing and you want to save it for a Pokemon that you think is really important. Uh, so we'll just talk to this dude in here and he's given us the TM for Psychic. Um, that's always really good to have. And we're going to head off into this gym. Just take the warp pads in the order that I take them. Um, if you get lost in this gym, what you can do is you can keep going up and down. So like if you spawn on the down warp pad, go up. And if you spawn on the top one, go down. And you will make it to um, Sabrina. She's the psychic gym leader, so we're going to be using the move Bite a lot to take down her Pokemon. Bite's super effective, given that it's a dark type. And that's Sabrina done. Now, sort of one gym that I haven't uh, really done yet, and that's the Grass Gym. The reason I've left that so late is because Grass is super effective against us, so we got to watch out for that. I'm going to take a quick dip into this gym. Uh, this gym we can get a Hitmonlee or a Hitmonchan from, um, and pretty much that's just one more to add to our Pokedex, so we might as well. We do have to fight these Black Belt guys, so... Alright, once you beat this guy, you get the choice. We're just going to pick Hitmonlee here. It doesn't really matter because it's just another one for the Pokedex. And next we're going to fly to Celadon. And we're actually going to get a coin case from this guy. Um, so this is pretty important uh, later on because we can get coins in it uh, in the casino. But for now, we're just going to head through and do the gym. So in the original game, you used to be able to get, I think it was Ice Beam from the top of the um, department store in Celadon. And if you taught your Blastoise Ice Beam, you could get through the grass gym really easily. But I'm pretty sure they've moved that TM to the game corner now, so it's actually quite a long process to get Ice Beam, unfortunately. That's why we're just going through here with normal moves, but you can see we've leveled up to almost double their level. So we're going to make it through the gym okay, even though they're technically super effective against us. We're going to fight the gym leader, Erica. Um, Erica's got a whole bunch of grass types because um, it is the grass gym, so we'll just do the best we can with this. Mega Kick's a pretty good move to use against him as well. Mega Kick we got up near Mount Moon on the way to Cerulean City. Ah, but that's Erica defeated. Alright, heading out, we're going to go back down to Pallet Town. This is where we started the game. We'll heal up here. Um, at home, and then we're going to surf to the south. Where we're going is Cinnabar Island, but first on our way we'll get a Tangler. And we'll just surf to the south here. Uh, we'll come across various Pokemon, we can catch a Tentacle. And here's Cinnabar Island. 
Uh, so the Pokemon Mansion here is where we're going. Um, it's a very important building. It gives us the key to the gym. Um, it's also full of fire type Pokemon. So the cool thing here is uh, we can just kill them pretty easily with Blastoise. So it's not too scary of an area if we pick Blastoise, but if you pick like a grass starter or something, it's pretty scary. Get ourselves a coughing. Um, and just like most places, there are different enemies on different floors. So on the later floors down, you can find the higher evolutions like a wheezing or something like that. All right, next room in, we're going to have a statue puzzle. Um, there was statue puzzles before, but they were pretty simple. All we have to do is hit the statue that I hit. Um, but with this one, it acts a little bit differently. So we're going to head down here and hit that statue, come out the left door and then go back to the right. We'll go up here. And we're going to have Blizzard there. So I said you couldn't get Ice Beam before, but um, you can get the TM for Blizzard. I'm pretty sure we'll end up teaching Blastoise Blizzard because um, it's really good when you have a water type Pokemon and they have an ice type move. Um, because normally what happens is grass is super effective against us, so it's really difficult to beat any grass Pokemon. But if we can teach Blastoise that ice type move, Blizzard, um, then we can use that on any grass Pokemon that come up and it's really effective. So we're going to go in here and do the fire gym. Uh, Caterpie does evolve into Metapod. Uh, there are not nine certified league badges. Poliwag does not evolve three times. Electric moves are not effective against ground type Pokemon. Uh, poke, yeah, so the answer is yes to that one. They're not identical. Uh, it does not contain Tombstony. Fun fact, they uh, changed that from a joke in the original. Um, if you get those uh, questions right, then you just go through like I did here. But if you get them wrong, all that happens is you have to fight one of the trainers and then you go through anyway, so it's not a big deal. So up until now, um, the game has looked pretty similar to the original versions, but this is where it's going to deviate quite a bit. Um, with the remake, they added an area called the Sevi Islands, and that's um, seven islands. And we're about to go and explore the first of the islands here. So uh, Bill's going to ask us when we come out of the gym if we want to go on the ferry. And we'll say yes to that. I'm pretty sure if you say no, all you have to do is go over to the SSN and then you can go there anytime you want. Um, at this point, we're actually locked into the islands. So we kind of have to do everything on here before we come back to the mainland. Um, but they're saying that they want to find the ruby and the sapphire to get this machine working again. Um, so that's sort of what we're going to be doing. He's asked us to go to Two Island, so we're going to go to Two Island next. Alright, so on Two Island, and we're going to go to the game corner here. This dude's asked us to go to Three Island for him. So now that he's asked us to go to 3 Island, that's why we're going to go 3 Island. And we'll see it's overrun by bikers. So we're going to have a sequence of battles here against them. Alright, so now we've beaten all the bikers and we can head up past them. Uh, so they've said she's gone to the berry forest. And we're just going to heal up before we head through to there. Alright, so we'll get on the bike and we'll head over to the berry forest here. We'll use this opportunity to catch a Pidgeotto as well.
Yeah, we're into the berry forest now. Alright, so this is where we're going for. We're going to see a uh, Hypno has kidnapped her. And so we'll just catch that. Alright, so we're back to the gang corner there. And the dad is very happy. Alright, so we're back on one island. We're going to go into the Poke Center here and have a chat to these guys. And then we're back to Cinnabar Island. So that was a little side story with the Sevi Islands. Um, that's going to be it for now, but we'll come back later on in the game and we'll do more stuff with it. Um, next, we've flown back to this town here and we're going to be fighting the ground type gym. Um, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to level up Blastoise a little bit because there's lots of strong trainers in this gym and most of them have ground type Pokemon that we're super effective against. So now we've moved that dude down, uh, you can get through the warp pad. Um, but first of all, we'll just heal up. Some of those trainer fights that I did there were compulsory, but a lot of them you can skip. Alright, so this Giovanni guy from Team Rocket is actually the head of this gym, and it's the ground type gym, so we're going to take him on. Uh, if we got Blastoise, it's not too hard, because we're super effective against pretty much all of his Pokemon. Alright, heading back out of this gym now. And I believe that's all eight gyms defeated for us. So we're going to head over to the Elite Four. That's just to the left of this town here. Now we've got a rival fight coming up first of all, but it's pretty straightforward. Okay, with the rival defeated, we can keep heading through to the Pokemon League. Uh, I'm just going to fly over to Celadon City first, though. This is the game corner, you can buy uh, coins for various amounts of money. Uh, what you're actually supposed to do is win the coins on the slot machines, but more often than not it's just quicker to buy them. And what we'll be doing is buying Ice Beam with that. So like I said before, it's really good if you can have your Blastoise know an Ice type move. Uh, we could have taught a Blizzard, which is what we picked up before, um, but I just bought enough coins to get Ice Beam from the game corner there. You can see I basically had no money left at the end after doing that, so you pretty much, it's really difficult move to get, but it's worth Blastoise having Ice Beam. Alright, so we're going to head up to the Elite Four through this section. Uh, these dudes will just check all of our badges as we go, and if you've missed any badges, they'll stop you and turn you back around.
Alright, now Victoria Road's a bit of a puzzle section. Uh, so you gotta do a lot of boulder pushing and strength puzzles. Basically you wanna get this boulder onto the switch if you can. Now I'm going to be using all the rare candies on Blastoise here. As I said before, rare candies can level you up by one level. I like to save them for later on in a Pokemon playthrough. Because um, when you level up from, like, let's say, level 60 to 61, that rare candy is giving you several thousand experience points. And when you level up from level 10 to 11, it's only giving you maybe 100 or 200. So um, the rare candies are more potent the later on you use them, if that makes sense. Because um, if you use a rare candy earlier on, that's going to help you out a lot earlier on. Um, but eventually what's going to happen is, well, that effect isn't really going to be very noticeable. Alright, so with that strength puzzle done, we're pretty much done with Victory Road here. And there we go. So now we're up to an area called the Elite Four. Now, uh, what the Elite Four is, is it's, well, it's actually five trainers that you have to beat in a row. Um, and you have to beat it without going to a Poke Center or anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is sell off some of the stuff I don't need here and buy a bunch of revives and full restores if I can, or max potions. So the difference between a max potion and a full restore is that a full restore, well, both of them will restore all your health, but a full restore will restore any status uh, issues that you have. Um, but I'll skip past these fights because they're all pretty same-ish. Um, this is the ice one, and we just keep chugging away at it. Alright, that's one Elite Four member down, Lorelei is done, now we're up to um, Bruno next. This one's sort of like a fighting slash rock type, so it's pretty easy to take down with Blastoise. And that's Bruno defeated. Um, I will really stress, make sure that you heal up your Pokemon before each fight. Um, you can heal it up using um, like potions and stuff. I'm going to teach Blastoise Ice Beam as well here. Um, Ice Beam will be really good, especially against the Dragon one. Um, if you have any ethers or elixirs, you can use those too, and they'll restore your PP, but you can't buy those, you have to pick them up. But anyway, now we've got Agatha, and uh, she's got like mainly ghost-type Pokemon and stuff like that. Alright, so that's Agatha defeated. Um, next one is Lance, who's the Dragon Trainer. Um, this is pretty much why we needed to get Ice Beam from the game corner there, because Ice is super effective against Dragons, so that's going to be pretty much good against all of his Pokemon. Now that Lance is beaten, we can go through to the champion, which is our rival, Gary. So if you're having trouble getting through the Elite Four, you could try grinding up more levels, or you could even try looking at buying X Specials from Celadon Mart. Um, X Specials, what they do is they up your attack, so you could use a bunch of them at the start of each fight, and then uh, you basically double or triple your attack if you use enough of them. Um, depending whether your Pokemon's mainly using special moves or physically attacking moves, um, that depends whether you buy X specials or X attacks. Um, but realistically, I would just level up your Pokemon a bunch and you should be fine for the Elite Four. Um, this level 64 is probably about as low as you'd really want to go for the Elite Four. Um, you'd have to have pretty good luck to make it through any lower than that. Yeah, 
And there we go, that's the Elite Four beaten. So if you are intending to just get to the end of the game and get to the credits, uh, you can pretty much stop here. Um, but what we're going to do from now is we're going to go through the post game. So that's a lot more on the Sevi Islands and that's actually doing round two of the Elite Four, which is like a much stronger version. We're going to go and catch Mewtwo and everything else like that. Um, so what you'll do is you'll let the credits play out um, and then when you come back after the credits you're going to be respawning in your house and that'll sort of kick off the post game. Um, there's quite a lot of content in the post game so it's definitely worth trying out especially if you've only ever played the originals in Kanto. Um, but at any rate this is just going to be the credits here and I'll skip past these and then we'll get stuck into the post game. Alright so now the credits are over it's going to pull you back into the game and when we get into the game we'll be able to get our national deck so let's see what that looks like. We come into the game and it gives us a little summary of what we've done and then we're going to head into Professor Oak's lab. Now if you don't get the national decks here that means you haven't caught enough Pokemon so you need to go and catch at least 60 Pokemon to make that happen. But we've got the national decks now which is really good. Alright, so with the National Dex, we're going to fly over to Vermilion City and we're going to head over to the Sevi Islands. So you go to talk to this dude. And we have gone to Island 1. So we'll talk to this guy here and he'll sort of set us off on our journey. Um, first thing we're going to do is sort of head up to this region up here. So this is Mount Ember, and there's going to be some Team Rocket people here. Um, fun fact, you can also find Moltres here as well if you'd like to catch that. Alright, with both the Team Rocket people beaten, we're just going to go up through this cave here. Yeah, there's a bit of a strength puzzle going on in here. And we get the ruby from the cave here, then we're going to use an escape rope to escape, and we'll head back to one island. So if we talk to this dude, we'll give him the ruby and he's very happy. And he's going to exchange our pass for a rainbow pass, which will let us go to all seven islands. So we're going to this one here. This is island four. And we're going to head into this cave here. So this cave is full of lots of strong ice Pokemon, and we're going to do a little bit of story in here. So we're going to fall down that hole. Pull down this hole, go up the ladder, and we got the HM for waterfall. So with that HM for waterfall, we can go up this waterfall. And then that means we can progress on with the rest of this cave here. So Lorelai is up the top, and she's very unhappy with Team Rocket. So once you beat Team Rocket there, um, that's sort of this section done. Alright, so we fly back, and then we're going to go across to Six Island. Then we're going to go here. Uh, we used cut on the door here. So up, left, right, down, and we got the sapphire. So we'll fly back to where we started, and then we're going to take the boat again. Uh, now we're going to Five Island. Alright, and we can get in there. So, 
basically there's a little warp uh, tile path that we got to take. So as long as you take the same path that I do, you should be able to make it through. And after you fought the admin, you'll go up here. You fight this guy. And once you've beaten this guy, we're just going to head up. And we'll talk to this one. Now we've beaten the scientist. We got the sapphire. So that's really good. So it looked like we got the sapphire before, but the scientist took it. So we're going to head back here. And we're going to go back. We're on one island again. And we'll give the sapphire to Celio. That's really good. And basically, um, what that does is that's the Sevi Island side story. So that's sort of the post game involved there. Um, now all we have to really do is go and catch Mewtwo and then beat the Pokemon League for the second time. So the best ending here is like the round two ending, so to speak. So that's like beating the harder version of the Pokemon League. Um, at this point, we could go to the Pokemon League and fight round two. Um, but it's a little bit quicker to catch Mewtwo just because Mewtwo is a lot stronger. If we tried to fight round two with our Blastoise at the moment, then it wouldn't really work. So it's going to go through the maze here and we'll eventually find Mewtwo in the cave. There he is. Uh, so if you want, you can use your Master Ball on this. Um, I'm going to do that in this case. Otherwise, you can weaken it and try and catch it with like an Ultra Ball or something. Um, but that's essentially how you catch Mewtwo there. So I'm going to teach me to Earthquake, because that'll be a really good move for it. I'm also going to teach it Fire Blast, and that'll sort of give it a bit more type coverage for when we fight round two at the Pokemon League. Those two TMs are going to be what we want. Setting out of the cave now. Now that we're done there, we're going to fly to the Pokemon League, and it'll essentially just be another four fights pretty similar to what we did before. Um, so with the Mewtwo in our party, it's going to be a lot easier to beat these four fights, and you should be able to do the same if you can get a Mewtwo the same as I got. So that's pretty much Lorelei defeated there. Uh, next one is Brino. You'll also notice um, they've got a lot of Johto Pokemon, because now we have the National decks. they're not just restricted to having the original 150. And on to Agatha. And we're on to Lance, the Dragon Trainer. As Lance pretty much beaten, you'll notice that I've swapped two Blastoise, that's because Blastoise had the ice move, which was really good against all the dragon Pokemon. So it's good to use a bit of both Blastoise and Mewtwo here. Alright, now there's just a matter of beating the champion again, and then we'll be done. Alright, and that's Gary pretty much beaten, and that'll be the end of the game. So that's really considered the best ending of Pokemon Fire Red is to do Elite Four Round 2. Um, there's some other stuff that you can do in the game like Trainer Tower and everything, um, but this is considered beating it properly, um, whereas getting to the first credits is... It, you still get the credits and everything, but um, it's not really the true ending of the game. So hopefully you found this useful and you're able to replicate it and get the best ending yourself. Um, if you did find it useful, then a subscription would always be appreciated as it helps grow the channel a lot and I should have more coming out like it soon. Thanks so much for watching.